loves, welcome back to the channel. If you're brand new, my name is Jessica Alexandria. I'm the creator of Bahati Life Apothecary, professional tarot astrologer and intuitive. It's so good to have you here today. Today is one of those beautiful days, legit. It's supposed to be cold. Technically, I'm in Florida, so what is cold? But for us, it kind of jumped down, dropped down to like 45 degrees, which was freaking freezing. And then today it just got really, really warm and all I wanted to do was just come out here, soak up these rays, be in the grass, be by the water, feel the wind on my skin, the breeze. If you see the dogs passing by, it's because they're roaming. And if you see a hawk over in that corner, it's because it's out there. So we're going to keep an eye on Franklin. You guys know he's literally under five pounds and that hawk is five times the size of him, but he's here right now, so we should be good. But regardless, keep your eyes open. So as you can tell by the title of this video, today we're gonna to be talking about soulmate indicators within the synastry chart. So first, I want to talk to you about exactly what a synastry chart is, why you would wanna pull it, why it's important, why it's valuable. And then in the next portion of this video, I wanna talk about the things that I look forward or I look for within a synastry chart to see compatibility and harmony within two different partners, within two different individuals. So let's go ahead and dive into exactly what is a synastry chart. So a synastry chart is the chart of two people that come together and what their dynamic looks like. What is their highs, their lows, their challenges, um, things that brought them together, things that make it karmic, things that can show why it's karmic, things that um, how well they would communicate and how much they can struggle with it. Now, I have been doing this for a long, long time. And there's one thing that I can always say is that there's no real make or break moment when it comes to what makes a relationship work and what makes it last. Even the most challenging aspects can be things that can really create chemistry, enough friction and tension that the two people, the two parties, when they work through it together, it feels so powerful, it feels so potent. And sometimes even those effortless trines, those effortless things that we would think that we would look for within the chart can actually make us lazy and make us feel like there's no real dynamic, no energy charge. So we don't, there isn't one thing that can break a relationship. There isn't one thing that can all like rip it all apart, but there are certain things that can, can explain why we have this natural effortless connection with this ease with someone and the, the things that can make us um, be like, whatever this is about this person, I just don't vibe with or whatever the case is. So that is what we can see within a synastry chart is how that person how they were born, the energy that they bring to this earth, and the energy that they bring to the partnership, and how their, their partner, the energy that they bring to them, and the dynamic between the two. And why you would want to look at this is because it can help to help you to better understand your partner so that your chances, if you're invested in this relationship or you want to understand better understand the relationship and why you guys are brought together and um, what you want to gain out of it and you know what your intention is your goals for the relationship to to give it a higher chance for success so synastry essentially is one person's astrology chart so their natal chart which is unchanging it's the exact moment the date the place that it is that you were born that helps to map out you as a human being you the dynamic of you and then compare that put it side by side almost layering it with another person and watch how you guys' personal planets, the planets that fall within your chart, how they interact with each other, how they engage. So again, there isn't one um, one or a lot of whole things that can come together. You know, even if you see a bunch of trines, which means that those the planets within your chart, they're all flowing together easily and effortlessly. That doesn't mean that that relationship is doomed for lasting success and longevity. In fact, a lot of relationships can fall apart if it's too effortless, if it's too easy. Um, and that doesn't mean that if you have a bunch of squares and challenges or oppositions within your chart that that relationship is doomed to fail. In fact, those relationships can be very successful. It's all about understanding the, the harmony within the relationship. What brings you guys together, understanding your partner and being committed to discovering them and being committed to um, discovering and developing yourself. Okay, so now let's go ahead and move it to the second part of this video that, is that I want to talk to you guys about. And the things that is that you want to look forward to or the things that would stand out to me as an astrologer when I am pulling a synastry chart. So one of the top indicators for a synastry chart when it comes to 
um, a harmonious connection or friction, sexual tension or anything else like that is I look for the sun and the moon. Now, why I'm not talking about Mars, which represents our drive, our ambition and our sexual tension and, and that type of stuff is because initially that's not something that we feel right away. The sun represents our ego and the moon represents our, our emotions, our emotional needs. And it is undeniable by a long shot that when I see the connection or I see a relationship between someone's sun and someone's moon or someone's moon and someone's moon or someone's sun and someone's sun, you know, it's something, a connection that's undeniable. Now, the two things that I look out for within the synastry chart within that is a sun you know, conjunctions. So if I see sun and moon conjunction, meaning partner A's sun is uh, 20, de 20 degrees Capricorn and partner B's moon is 19, 18 degrees Capricorn. So it's a, it's a conjunction there. They're sitting right on top of each other. I understand that, you know, this person, when they met, when these two people, when they met for the first time, it was probably like instant, never seen you before, Never talked to them before, but it was easy. It was effortless. I knew that it was someone that, is that I want to spend my time with. I knew that it was someone. It felt like I knew known them for years. I, I had this natural um, inclination to be comfortable with them, to have a sense of ease. Now, another thing that stands out to me, that's one of the most powerful indicators. It's, it's either that uh, conjunction or the opposition or a trine or a sextile, but the ones that stand out to me again are the conjunctions when they're sitting on top of each other or in opposition. Another thing that I like to look out for is how, um, how their sons kind of relate to each other. So that could be, you know what you hear everybody say like, um, you know, what's your sun sign or what's your, what's your horoscope sign? What's your zodiac sign? And then the one person says, I'm a Leo. Oh, cool. Cause I'm a Sagittarius. So those things are cool too. But what really stands out to me again is the connection between the sun and the moon, because that shows that natural effortless connection over time. Another thing that stands out to me is Venus. So that Venus is what we're attracted to. It's what we desire. It's what, um, is valuable to us and what we appreciate. So this, when we look at, or when I look at Venus or the position and the placement of Venus within, um, within a synastry chart reading, I'm not necessarily looking for compatibility, meaning like um, one Venus, someone's Venus falls in the same sign as the other person's Venus. I want to be able to understand, um, you know, why they were attracted to each other. Um, and when I look at a synastry chart, I can better understand why one person was drawn to another person's, um, drawn to another person physically, you know, why they were physically attracted to them, which gives me a better idea of why they were brought together, why they were attracted to each other, why they, why they, um, you know, were pulled together, where the magnetism came from. And then I look at Mars to see how they relate, not relate to each other, but how they chase after each other, how they pursue each other. So those things are really, they really stand out to me. I don't necessarily look for compatibility with that, although it's important for me to look for compatibility with that, especially when it comes to love languages. I personally feel like um, as an astrologer and as a spiritual person, that when you understand that the placement of someone's Venus within their chart, you can pretty much work with if you're committed to understanding them, if you're committed to working with them, and if you're committed to the relationship, you can pretty much understand their love language and work with that so that they can feel loved by you, they, they can feel supported by you, and their moon sign, so where their moon falls. All right, so when it comes to um, soulmates and twin flames and those types of things, I definitely look to, to the vertex point. This is not something new that I've talked about on my um, YouTube channel, but it's, this video is really, really deep in the archives, it goes so far back. So I'm gonna mention it again. But the vertex point is the point of faded encounters, faded moments, and faded people that come into our lives. Sorry about that, y'all. My phone decided to poop out because the sun, all that divine masculine energy was just way too hot to handle. My phone was like, bye. But anyways, like I was saying before, I was so rudely interrupted. Uh, one of the transits that stands out to me again is the vertex point. And the vertex point, like I was saying, I did mention it before, but it gets so far back in the video and my video um, content that is that I've uploaded. But the vertex point represents faded encounters, faded moments, things that you are going to come across in your life that can change your life for the better, for the worst. And when I look at a synastry chart, if I see definitely sun, moon, 
um, even Mercury, any of the personal planets, but definitely the sun or the moon. The sun and the moon is one of those, are the planets that stand out to me absolutely the most when it comes to what makes a relationship faded, what makes a, um, a relationship, um, you know, soulmate or twin flame, twin flame indicators. So if the sun or the moon is aspecting the vertex point in any one of the trines outside of a sextile, so if it's a trine, if it's a conjunction, definitely, if it's an opposition, definitely, or if it is a square, absolutely, to infinity and beyond. This definitely a square. So a square is when the universe says, listen, no matter what it is that happens, you know, we are going to challenge you and make it so that you cannot miss this connection. We are going to force it and push it into your life regardless of the circumstances. This is when a person comes through, especially with a square, where you're like, listen, I wasn't even ready for a relationship and you know it just felt and I you know, for whatever reason and then this person when we met it almost felt like we were meant to come together that regardless of what my plans were we knew that we needed to come together we knew that we were going to build a relationship we knew that this was something special that's how powerful a square is and definitely in opposition a trine is more like it, it feels a little bit more easy and effortless but with the squares it's like regardless of what it is that you were thinking planning feeling doing praying for setting intention for regardless the universe says we are bringing you guys together okay so the sun and the moon now a lot of you guys, I'm going to be 100% with you. Some of you guys, when you see the vertex point, you start grasping for straws. You want this relationship to work out so badly, um, and you want it to be explained and supported by the astrology chart so severely that you look for anything to connect with the vertex point, that you're looking for other points like the North Node or um, Pluto or Jupiter, and those things... Um, not the points, but the planets. If you do have a planet connecting with the vertex point, then that can hint towards a very faded connection, a very karmic connection, or a soulmate, or a life partner type of connection. But any of the other points, meaning not planets, but points, um, within your chart or a line, so let's say it's your, your DC line, your seventh house of relationships, the um, or your ascendant, those things do not count when it comes to my studies and when it comes to my research. I'm sure there's some people who disagree with me, but it is what it is. Like, I don't, I have no, I have no um, interest in debating with you. This is from my studies over years and years and years. And maybe my mind will change. Maybe I'll start seeing some evidence, but I haven't. And one of the things that got me so hyper-focused on astrology is what makes relationships work and why they come together. And you know, the, the purpose of the relationship and how, how do we make it work? How do we make it long lasting? And that, you know, having a point matched with a vertex point is has never been strong enough. I've seen, it doesn't even make a dent. It doesn't make a difference. Speaking of um, angles and speaking of houses, if any one of the planets, the personal planets falls within another person's seventh house or fifth house, 11th house or 12th, there is, or first, there is a really strong connection for this relationship to be lasting, meaningful, and substantial when it comes to a romantic um, connection. I, you know, regardless, it does help if there are, if the sun and the moon, um, uh, Mercury, Venus, the personal planets are supported by other planets, of course, of course. Hand, oh God, that was a big ass bug. Did you guys see it? Um, but of course it does help if those planets are being supported by, you know, personal planets and they're all making connections. The more connections that is that you have and the more powerful connections you, you have to these vertex, um, vertex points or the vertex point or the north node, the, the more meaningful, the more impactful the relationship, the more impactful it will have on your life and another person's, the other person's. Um, but the other thing that stands out to me is if you have any of the personal planets, meaning Sun, Moon, Mercury, Venus, falling in someone's seventh, fifth, twelfth, first house, you have a really strong uh, indicator of a very important lasting connection. Now, if you do not have that, if you do not have a personal planet in any one seventh house or any one of the uh, houses that is that I just mentioned, you know those the connection can be significant. But the the energy of the house of the energy of the house that it rules, not only of what that house rules in general, meaning Franklin, come here. Come here. 
that might be an, that, that hawk about to be like dinner come here baby come close to mama good boy so yeah if you there might be a, a um there definitely might be you know the the energy of that house that it rules will will play out in the relationship always okay i was gonna say nine times out of ten but it's ten times out of ten so i mean if you have like you know third house if it falls in your third house if it falls in your sixth house even worse then the the meaning if you have a person's personal planet falls within your sixth house that relationship without a doubt ends up being so burdensome burdensome in some way you guys and no offense but i just don't think that anybody deserves that especially when it comes to romantic relationships don't do it to yourself if you pull a sinistry chart and you see that connection to the sixth house just run for the hills please believe me um eighth house can be a little tricky too but we want to third house can be tricky as well but for the most part let's keep our eyes on the seventh let's keep our eyes on the fifth the twelfth and the first twelfth can be a little wobbly but in the today's time in 2020 2021 you know and the years to come so many of us are focusing on spiritual healing um you know child child you know child wounds and stuff like that healing wounds from our, our childhood and generational curses that we would be surprised how the universe brings those people together in order to heal those wounds within each other so i don't necessarily want you guys to run from that when you see it but i do want you guys to show up from a space realizing that you are going to be vulnerable you are going to be exposed you are going to be changed for the better it's not going to be the easiest thing ever but it'll be worth it in the long haul long haul okay so that's pretty much all i can share right now and hopefully i kept this video under 20 minutes you guys know that i'm a virgo virgo sun virgo moon and virgo uh, mars so i can legit talk about this stuff with my 10th house that's ruled by pisces so you know you know that i'm like written for um, astrology for esoteric symbolism etc etc like I could talk about this forever if you are interested uh, this is the first time that I'm advertising this or I'm sharing this with you guys but I am writing an educational book on astrology but um, so shout out to me but it's gonna be self-published It's something that I'm very excited about I'm gonna be giving it all to you as well as tarot but that's another thing it's gonna be a whole grimoire situation so you heard it here first if you're subscribed to my youtube channel and you're tuned in and you know kudos to us and props to us for doing this finally but 2021 is definitely going to be, be the year for me of writing um, and publishing I can already see it within my chart and I'm here for it um, but <clears throat> if you want to study uh, tarot esoteric symbolism I already have a sacred uh, sacred circle tarot school in development um, and in creation it has manifested itself years ago two years ago I believe and every week we go live at Tuesday we dive into the esoteric symbolism of uh, we, di we dive into esoteric symbolism not only found within the tarot cards but also in astrology also in the cycles of our life and it helps you to be able to understand and work with not only your intuition but you know timing and things how things how, th how things change in developing you know your own psychic gifts your own intuitive gifts and what tarot means not only from this basic superficial you know this is what this card means this is the meaning of this card but deeper the history of it and the symbolism of it and how immense it goes how deep it goes and the links for that will be down below until then thank you guys so much for watching i'll see you in my next video i hope that you are well i hope that you are thriving i hope that you are happy i hope that you feel that you are loved and supported because you are and i'll see you in my next one bye